if you feel like your AI art is lacking when using Midjourney and you just don't feel like you've got the hang of how to write good prompts, then you should check out this prompt helper I've discovered online that'll help you to sort of get better results more easily by exploring different options and crafting a custom prompt from it. So we're gonna jump into Midjourney and have a look at that now. Okay, so I've got this prompt here, a human face with AI eyes. And I haven't added, apart from my, my basic automatic additions of higher quality and aspect ratio, it's nothing special. It's a face, there's something to do with with the eyes that make it kind of look AI-ish, but it's nothing fancy. If I wanna get uh, some cool results and I don't really know what to type, there's a prompt helper if I head over now. There's this MJ prompt tool here at prompt.noonshot.com. And what I can do is I can start typing. If I type in human, I can actually change the word weight and then continue to type here, human face. And I've still got, again, word weight. I can change that to influence my results. I have all these other controls and bits and pieces here that I can use to generate a prompt. And you'll see the prompt here is imagine prompt human face with a weight of 1.3. Uh, and I've got a bit of control over what I type. So I'm gonna just reset this to one because I don't really want to play with the word weight much. So a human face with AI eyes. And I can actually now choose different styles, and colors, and all sorts of things here. Now I've already got my quality set to two automatically, but I can go down and change the quality here, make it something really rough. Uh, I can stylize it, I can add lighting, and it's got examples here I can use for reference. So electric arc, I can then continue. I can then make the size different. So at the moment, I can choose an aspect ratio and change that. I can make it ultra wide, uh, that sort of thing. The height and width, I can sort of change that. It won't actually create it at that resolution, I don't believe, but uh, it gives you, it helps you control the aspect ratio a bit better. We've got all these options that we can play with. Now I've kept the, the quality of this one at 0 0.25 to keep it really rough. It's also gonna be really quick, um, but I can go through and change any of these anytime and we're gonna explore it a little bit. But let's just say we're happy with what we got here and I want, if I want to exclude anything here, maybe I want to avoid certain terms. So I can type in hair if I want to exclude the word hair, so maybe there's no hair in the image. When I'm ready, I can either highlight this and copy it or I can just hit copy prompt here. Now this is the first time I've used this. So let's see how we go. If I paste this in place, it automatically puts the imagine and prompt in there, which is pretty cool. Human face with eyes, electric arc, which is cool, that's the colors. There's a height of a thousand, the width of a thousand. I must have left that turned on when I went in there. Uh, version four, quality of 0 0.25, no hair. And see what results we get. So straight away, I've got an issue, an issue here, and that is because I already have suffix, I'm gonna type in slash prefer suffix, because I've already added in an aspect ratio. So I'm just gonna hit enter, and enter again to remove that suffix. So now if I paste and hit enter, you can see here we've got some issues already. <laughs> so there's a width issue here with version four. If I go back, I actually need to turn off width and height because it's actually, if I go here to width and height, I need to actually go back to default or aspect ratio. And I'm gonna make this 16 to nine and head out. So straight away, it's not perfect, but we actually got that now. We've got something here. We've got an aspect ratio of 16 to nine version four. I can also, change the version. I believe there's somewhere here to change the version. But uh, for now, we'll just say here version four by default. We can also change to other versions. But now let's copy that prompt and try again. And now we have something that works. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And let's see what image it comes up with. So check that out. That is very much different from what we had before. So you can see how it's able to influence the style by using some of the uh, additional uh, sort of controls that we've added in the prompt helper. So let's head back and try something else. I'm going to reset. I'm actually just going to, there's nowhere here I can see to actually just hit reset. So I'm just going to refresh my browser. And now we're gonna check out some more of these uh, options. If I go here again to styles, I can choose different styles. So let's say I wanna find something that's sort of more of a photo or something like that. Let's go with horror for or maybe something yeah, horror to see what kind of results we get with that. Continue. Lighting, we're gonna choose something like, let's go crepuscular rays. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but let's give that a go. Camera, we can actually choose a camera, 360 panorama, DSLR. Uh, we've got all these different telescopic lens. So why don't we try a DSLR 
continue. We can also choose artists here. I'm actually gonna leave the artist for now because I wanna go for more of a photographic look. Colors, I wanna choose that uh, baby blue color. We're going with that icy look, although maybe we go citrus just to mix it up a bit. Materials, we can choose a material. Um, I'm gonna actually go with fiber optic just to give it something different again. The size, we're gonna leave that. Depth of field, we want deep, sort of, or we want shallow focal blur. Quality, we're gonna go quality of two for higher detail. And stylize, we're gonna go higher to give it more stylization. So we've added in a whole bunch of options onto this prompt and you can see what it's added in there. So we've got a whole bunch of options there and it's gonna be a bit of a bit of a crazy one. So let's just give it a go. We're gonna go copy prompt, head back to mid journey, paste that prompt in place and hit enter. So we've got a problem again. Stylized must be between zero and 1000 with version four. So let's just paste that in there and we'll just edit that. So if you have any issues, just read the error. You're gonna to have to make some adjustments if you're using version four because I think they've only recently updated to version four on this prompt helper. So you see it's influenced the style a bit, probably not as much as I thought it would, but it has included some of the coloring, some of that icy effect um, and has sort of given it a little bit of a photographic look by giving it a bit of a, a focal blur in the distance while sharpening up the, the foreground. Uh, let's actually upscale this one and take a look. Now check out, you can really notice the, the focal blur that it's added from the DSLR and the depth of field and just some of that icy kind of look in the eyes. It's chosen to put certain elements we've selected into certain areas of the image because we gave it a lot to work with. So if I actually go to the next one, same again, we've got the, kind of that icy look and that depth of field, which I think is really cool. And uh, it's actually done a pretty decent job of controlling our prompt. However, we have given it a ton to work with. So let's just tap back and see what we can do to get something a little different. Now, first of all, I'm gonna go into camera and I'm just gonna clear all and close. With the colors, I'm also gonna clear and close. I'm gonna get rid of the focal blur and just say no preference. Change this default stylized since we had an issue with that before. Now materials, also gonna clear and close and we're just gonna stick with styles. So we've got the lighting that we chose. We've got the styles here. We chose horror. Let's actually just change that to icy. Continue and we'll just stick with these two styles. We'll copy that prompt and head back into mid journey. Now what I've done is I haven't actually cleared. I've included horror and icy together because I didn't clear the horror setting, but uh, let's see what it comes up with. And check out how now we've cleared some options back and give it something simpler to work with. We've got these really icy sort of tones added to the image. And now check out the quality of that where we simplified it. We've got something really sharp, but uh, it still actually has a little bit of that focal blur in there, but um, it's still a really cool effect. And if we switch over to the other one we upscaled, same again, some great detail and a really cool effect by uh, exploring some of the styles that I didn't even know that this existed, some of these styles that are in this prompt hopper. So even if you know how to craft good prompts in mid journey, it could be a great way to uh, sort of expand and see what styles are out there if you wanna play with it. So let's uh, go and have another look at that prompt helper and see what else we can get out of it. So you can upload an image for it to work with. I'm not gonna explore that today, but uh, as I said, you've got different versions, but you still don't have the test version or Niji, but you know, one thing at a time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into lighting and we're gonna clear that and we're gonna clear again. This time we're gonna go into artists because we can actually choose an artist style to use when we're using the self I used to choose something a bit more abstract like this or uh, you know, so many different styles available. We'll, we'll choose Yoji Shinkawa and I'm gonna give that a weight of two because I want that to really stand out. And then I'm gonna go back in for things like colors. I'm gonna try neon yellow. Materials, Let's just go with gold and the neon yellow. We'll see what kind of results we get with that. And again, styles, let's just throw some metallic in there. So a bit of a mix up and I'm really focusing on that style first. That's gonna be the primary thing. That's why we're giving it a weight of two. 
But uh, let's see how that goes and copy that prompt into Mid Journey to see what results we get. So we got some pretty unique effects out of this one. It sort of kept the style, the color, and it's really controlled the output a little bit better than I, uh, I probably would have if I tried to sort this out myself. But having that visual reference really helps because if you're not someone who understands exactly what they want and the terminology behind it, this prompt helper is a great way to help you really nail it. And on top of that, you can simply go into the prompt, edit it a little bit yourself afterwards if you want to, but uh, let's upscale these and have a look at the results. So you can see the results and they're pretty cool. This is more of an artistic look as opposed to the photographic look. So you can actually get some unique imagery by exploring what's available and probably even get some things you probably didn't even know were were styles and have a bit of a play with it. So it's a great way to explore art styles as well. The good thing about AI art is it's not just about generating art, it's about exploring art styles and exploring looks to get some inspiration so you can use it on your own art. But um, that's a pretty handy tool, Mid Journey Prompt Helper. Once again, there will be a link in the description so check that out and uh, have a bit of a play with it and see what results you get. Otherwise, thanks for watching the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. I've got a ton of mid-journey videos and tutorials on my channel, so check that out. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. We'll see you again soon.